are currently watching um, the only set of my workout today that I filmed because it was probably the worst workout I've had in six months. Um, here's me squatting 185 for threes. Um, this was the heavy, or actually I think 190 was the heaviest I got today. With my goal for threes was supposed to be um, 210 pounds for three. I undershot big time. And when that happens to me, um, when something is really, really bad in my life, or really, really good in my life, I like to um, analyze it on a small scale, if you will. If it's, if you know anything about like my blog or whatever, I overanalyze everything. I write shit out to like absurd amounts because I feel like it helps me, um, good or bad. Like if, if, like I said, if things like today, worst work I've had in forever, I was just quickly like. I was eating a meal right now and I was like, okay, what the fuck affects my workouts? Like, what are the things that when they're on, I feel on, and when they're off, I feel off? And they're, everything's to a varying degree. Um, but I made a short list of things that whether they're, they're um, like on track or off track can make or break my workout. Sometimes completely and sometimes like kind of little effects. So I wanted to go over them with you guys. Um, and if you have any additional like things that you talk about, feel free to write them below. Um, but first and foremost, and where I royally fucked up today, <laughs> was having adequate rest. Um, and that's on quite a few levels, right? So, for example, today, I slept way too much. Um, I'm typically, I sleep from like four to eight hours a night with a nap that's either 15 minutes to like two hours. Like, I can't... If I don't nap, I'm not very effective the second half of the day. Um, but this happened to me yesterday. Like last night I slept way too much, but because the day before I barely slept, we, went, we had a day trip to San Jose, and I was just like gassed, so I, like, I slept way too much, and that affected my workout, which again, a lot of these things that will affect you, you can do too much or too little. So of course if you don't sleep, your workout's probably going to be shitty, but me, I slept way too, like I woke up at 1 p.m., you guys. That's like happens to me like once every three or four months. And it was today and I had an awful fucking day. Awful time. Okay, so adequate rest. Not only with sleep, um, with me, again, I said like with naps. Also with your body. Like I know I used to work at, um, like if I coach all day and I'm on my feet all the time, if I try to do, do squats right after that or dead, whether I'm mentally awake or not, my legs are a little bit tired. I need to give them like a couple hours at least of rest or like I'll come home, take a nap and go back to the gym. So your body needs rest, your mind needs rest and also, which is another thing that I think contributed today was I deadlifted three days ago for threes and my back is still like super sore. So I'm probably not like, um, I'm about to go into a deload so I'm feeling pretty gassed. I've also been dieting for three or four weeks and I'm still sore from my leg day three days ago. So if I had waited a couple days, but I'm, I'm on like a program right now, but if you have the luxury and you're like not in any type of hurry or like strict program and you can wait till you're recovered, that might help you too. So adequate rest. That's probably the longest one I'll talk about. Um, food intake, okay? So I currently right now, if I eat too much, I feel like shit when I work out. So because I woke up late, um, I wanted to like get up and get to the gym real quick. And so, if I ate my normal, like, bigger breakfast and I went straight to the gym, I would feel too full, especially on a day where I'm wearing a belt, um, like a squat or deadlift day. If I eat too much, it, like, hurts, you know? Um, that also happens to me if I drink too much, which liquid intake is something that I have to monitor. If I wake up and I'm thirsty and I just, like, chug and I try to go to the gym, then I don't feel very well. Um, also, let's see what's my food intake. Okay, but then when I'm in prep, right... If I don't eat my big breakfast, like, within a couple hours of lifting, I don't even make it through very well. So, something important to mention there is know whether you like working out on an empty or full stomach, um, which can vary depending on who you are, where you are, in or out of season, um, just your preferences in general, and the type of workout. Because I can eat a lot more before... Um, like elliptical or arm day or something like that but even though you need like more energy for leg day well, wearing a belt hurts my tummy so it's all like there's no right or wrong but I'm just saying these are things that I have to I don't even like think about it hard now but I wanted to like 
again, I was kind of like analyzing what's been going on. So, um, I have friends that like to lift completely fasted. Um, if you're an intermittent faster, obviously it's probably something you do. I have friends that need to eat a lot before they do anything. So, another thing to think about. Um, caffeine intake. So, typically, um, I just drink a coffee on the way to the gym. If it's um, leg day, I'd say about every other leg day, depending on what I've done throughout the day, I'll need like another, either another coffee if I'm working on the afternoon, or um, I'll take a pre-workout. But I personally don't like being reliant on things. I'm relying on coffee right now, I'm not going to lie, like most days. Like I wouldn't die without it, but I wouldn't be like as on it. But I don't want to like, I don't want to be with people who takes pre-workout every day. At the end of prep I was, and I've kind of like dwindled that down. So, um, also caffeine intake. I know a lot of people will take it before they work out, like 30 minutes before they even go to the gym. Uh, personally, and like Brandon does this too, when we get to the gym we'll take it because we know we're going to like stretch out, warm up, blah, blah, blah. He takes a long time to warm up. I don't, I only take like 5-10 minutes, but I like for my pre-workout or my coffee or whatever to hit me when I'm getting to my heavy sets, um, if that makes sense. Because obviously like the first few and like the couple working sets aren't bad, but it's like the end of the working sets that I, I feel like I'd like it to kick in for me. Um, so rest, food intake, caffeine intake, the time of day. Okay, so this also for me varies depending on what the workout is. I like cardio at the beginning of the day by far, especially if I get to, if I'm getting to like run. I really like running in the mornings. Or I don't want to say morning, I don't like saying that because it depends on what time you wake up. So I either like it in the mornings or after my nap. Any type of my workout, that is when I'm by far the most awake. I really like waking up and working out. Um, so there's the whole body clock thing. Also in relation to like important items. So time of day, not only with you and your like, is it circadian or your sleep patterns, but also in relation to things. So if I... Like, say I like working out in the mornings, but I know that I have something, like, important at, like, 1 or 2. Um, I'll purposefully put my workout after that thing because I don't like working out while my brain is thinking about, like, the, if I have, like, an important meeting, an important phone call, um, something, like, you know, like a, a private lesson with a kid. Something that, like, takes a lot of mental energy. I don't like doing my workout before that. So that takes precedence for me. So if it's like workout in the morning or at night, which of this I typically prefer, but if there's something in the middle of the day that's important to me and I know that this workout would have my brain over here the whole time, then I'll move my workout to the nighttime. You know, and I'll like purposefully nap in there. So that's, again, something that matters to me. It might not matter to a lot of people, but that, the long, the more I do something, the more data you collected, right? And this is just like my workout habits and things that affect it that I'm learning over time. Okay. Um, then I have environment. One, two, three, four. This is five of seven, so stick with me. Okay, so my environment. Um, I have two gym memberships almost all the time. Um, I think for like the past five, six years. And even like when I didn't have two gym memberships, I had like a 24-hour fitness membership and I'd go to different 24s depending on how I feel. So I like having two gyms for different reasons, right? There are some times where I like to lift with my friends. I like to lift heavy. I have a lot of time. Um, I, you know, things like that. And then I always have like a gym where I like to tend to do like cardio. Um, I want to be within my own head by myself. It's for quick workouts. Um, and I've been at times in my life where I only like working out by myself. I've had times where I really favor having other people around. Um, and now I've kind of hit this balance where it's like it depends on the workout. If it's a leg day, um, I tend to, if it's possible, go with like Brandon and Matt and all of them and go to the gym or a gold gym where like we all have memberships too. We all cheer each other on. We're all watching each other, helping each other, spotting each other, whatever. But if it's like cardio or like quick arms or it's like um, maybe I have something that while I'm doing cardio I want to really think about or have a podcast I really want to listen to, things like that, um, then I'll do cardio by myself at like this other smaller gym that no one I know goes to. And nobody cares if I'm there and like, you know, all that stuff. So I think the environment for people and equipment matters. So um, 
again, the smaller gym with the cardio, not only is it like, because sometimes I have leg day where I want to be by myself, but I can't go there because the squat racks I'm too short for. Like, I bought them out. Um, so equipment matters too. Um, if I want to have a really good upper body day, like a really good bench press day, there's a certain gym that has a bench that like fits for me really well. But if it's like a light bench day where I don't need a lift off, I'll go to the gym where I want to be by myself. Anyways, I think you get the idea. So the environment matters with equipment and with whether or not I want to be around people. Sometimes that can affect my workout and my mood and all that stuff. Um, second to last thing is like my input, like my sensory input. This affects me a lot. So I've really in the last year gotten into podcasts. Um, I just love absorbing. I've found that I have a lot less time to read and that's a really good way to get my little education on while I'm, you know, and, and working out. Now, when I really got, like, when I first discovered the whole world of podcasting, I knew it existed for a lot of years later, but I just now, like, got into it. And for the first couple months, that's all I do when I worked out, I'll listen to podcasts, listen to podcasts. Um, and then, I forget what happened, like, one day my phone died or something after being really into podcasts, and I went back to my old iPod that I keep in my car, like, just in case that happens, and I just jammed out all day. And I found, I was like, holy shit, this really helps me. Like, I'm, my head's bobbing, like, I'm, you know... Um, and like I can get more into my heavy sets, you know, so now I've again reached, I figured out where that fits me best. So if I'm doing bench, squat, deadlift, anything that's like real heavy and like full body intensive compound, I, I listen to music, um, on my phone or iPod. Now it's like my phone, it rarely dies, but, um, so I listen to like music that like really hits me hard. It's whatever. So I like music for that, but then for all my light accessory work like leg extensions curls calves like arms some shoulders a lot of the times I can then go into podcasting um which I like because sometimes you know how you get to that point where like when is this workout over like you feel a little bit down like but it the pod I'm like oh but there's 45 minutes left in this podcast so I may as well just finish it here so I can stress my workout on I might get some extra volume in that time um so I enjoy listening to music, I enjoy podcasting. If I was like, if I had to sit here all day and say, which would you rather listen to? Like sitting here, it would be podcasts, obviously, uh, because I'm like learning stuff, you know? But when I'm lifting heavy, I like music. So I, it depends on what I'm doing. Okay, last thing is referring, um, having my notebook around or my spreadsheet out. Not more with my compounds, more with my like accessories. Because the compounds I usually kind of hit because it's, it is like super written out. But if I'm doing like say lap pulls or something and I'm I'm like warming up with 50 pounds, I'm like, fuck, this feels kinda of hard. 60, I'm like, why is it still so hard? Okay. And I'll be like, hold on a second, like what do I normally do? And I like pull out my notebook sometimes and I'll look back at like the last three or four workouts at that same gym on that same piece of equipment. And I'm like, really? Like you're gonna do twenty pounds less than you did two like two workouts ago? And so then I'll go and I'll put it up and I'm like, that that's stupid, it's an accessory, like you can push it. Um so that's it. Or sometimes like I'll do something and I'm like, man, that feels pretty easy. And I'll look back and be like, this is all I've been, you know, like I'll look back at like the time before and I'll realize that it's the same weight, but it feels really good. I'm like, shit, why not just go up 10 more pounds? So sometimes I get kind of confused, not confused, but I think there's a space in your program for RPE based training. And I did that a lot. And sometimes like you got to know, for, like today, as you saw in my first squats, like that should not have been that hard, but it was. And if I did 210, I probably wouldn't have even gone up and it's like that you have to figure out like big picture what's important like get your volume in or go so heavy that you fail out and like the rest of your workouts real shitty so that's it to review things that affect my workout rest food intake food and liquids uh, caffeine time of day environment my input as far as music podcasting whatever people maybe sometimes um, and referring to my old workouts. And that is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven things that affect my If you guys have any um, anything else, you feel free to leave in the description box if anything like helps you out or makes you have a shitty workout or whatever. Um, but I think the thing to take away from this is that sometimes, no matter how mentally tough you are, shit doesn't always work out. And sometimes if you feel like a pussy all the time, Try something else or like a different habit or tweak a habit that you already have and then, um, you know, it can, uh, it can help you out.
Okay, I'm going to stop talking. But those are some thoughts I had today after the worst workout ever. Talk to you guys soon.